When you think about VW vans, I'd be genuinely surprised if one of the first things that popped into your head wasn't the camper vans. But they all have to start somewhere, and they start right here with the VW Transporter medium panel van. Now, VW call this van the latest version of an Icon, and it is. So, let's crack it open and give this Icon its very own Vanarama road test. Before we get started, I just wanted to say that I sincerely hope that you enjoy this review, and if you do, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you're in the market for a brand new van or pickup truck, head to vanarama.com. Now, let's start this review where we always do at the front of the vehicle. And to be fair, the first thing you're gonna notice is this great big VW badge. There is absolutely no doubt we are standing in front of a VW Transporter. Where is it? It's right there. Now, the lines of the bonnet are one of my favourite touches at the front of the Transporter. It could have just been a nice smooth panel of metal, but it's not. It's got these great sharp lines that draw your eyes up the vehicle and onto that really steeply slanted windscreen. It looks really cool. I think the aesthetics and the looks of this vehicle are absolutely perfect. Hey, look, I've said it a thousand times. This is my favourite medium panel van. Don't want to make any of the other vans jealous, but it is. Okay, so let's have a look at the grille here. Now, there's the big badge in the middle, and you've got these two metal lines that sweep out into the big, big headlight clusters. And these massive headlight clusters will increase your visibility in low light conditions superbly. Now, the whole bottom half of the front end is black plastic, and that's simply a weight saving measure. It also means that if you do get a little bit of damage on this panel, it can just be popped off and replaced very easily. I have to say, it's a very attractive looking front end. I just think it's a really good looking vehicle, and I'm pretty sure there are gonna be loads of you out there who are saying exactly the same, nodding along while I'm saying it. Follow me around the vehicle and check out those big 16 inch steel wheels. Those are very tough and very, very hardy. You've got good black plastic up here on the wing mirrors. These are heated. They don't fold, but they are heated wing mirrors, which means in frosty conditions, they'll take care of themselves as soon as you turn the engine on. The whole side of the vehicle is really nice nice looking, there's great big deep lines that just pull your eyes all the way around the vehicle to the back end. Now, usually we jump straight into the cabin, but I wanna show you what it's like at the business end of the vehicle first. And here we are at the business end. Now, as I open the back doors, the doors have a nice weight to them that is really reassuring, and there's all that kind of VW build quality that you know and love. The two back doors, this is just one solution that you can have on the back end. You can have these 50-50 split doors, you can have them glazed, and you can even have the iconic hatch. Now, I love the hatch, but these doors are pretty cool in their own right. Now, they open up to their 90 degrees. If you press this button here and disengage the slam lock, they open all the way up, and instead of just slamming against the side of the van, they're held in place by those nice little magnets down there, and they are very, very tough. You actually have to give it a bit of a pull to separate them. Now, this is the long wheelbase version of the vehicle. There's a short wheelbase version and a long wheelbase version. The short wheelbase is around 2.6 meters long, but in the long wheelbase, you've got three meters of length. It's 1.6 meters wide and it's 1.6 meters high. So you've got plenty of space. VW transporters don't have a load through. A lot of other vans do. So they kind of make up for having slightly smaller loading bays by having those load throughs. But with three meters of length, pretty sure you'll be absolutely fine depending on what you want to carry. And just look at the quality of the ply lining. I've got to say it's probably one of the nicest ply linings I've ever seen in the back of a van. It's really, really nice. In fact, the grain goes the right way. It's not just been slapped down and screwed down. It's, it's all perfect. The grain runs along all the panels and up the doors. Really, really nice attention to detail. Down each side, you've got four lashing points, which means you can secure everything in place. And from a payload point of view, well, that's probably the only place you really compromise when you go for a VW Transporter. Now, across the range, you've got payloads that vary from around 760 kilograms up to 1200 kilograms. Now, it sounds like a lot, but when you consider that some of the PSA Group vans that we've reviewed have payloads of nearly 1500 kilograms, you can see what I mean when I say that the payload is really the only place that you're gonna be compromising. Now, follow me around. I wanna show you the side sliding door. And again, on the side sliding door, you get that Volkswagen build quality. Look, it's a very tough, reassuringly heavy door, but the action on it is just so smooth. I've just pushed it with my fingertips there. And even when you close it as well, 
a reassuring sound when it falls into place and shuts. Now the opening is a meter wide, which is perfect for sliding in a pallet, or you can even, you know, bags of cement, piping, whatever you need to, you can get in and out very easily. And one of my favorite things about it is that the bulkhead doesn't intrude into your opening, meaning that this is as wide as it is. There's no having to sort of finagle things around. You just slide straight in, absolutely perfect. So that is it. That is the loading bay of the VW Transporter. I wanna get into the cabin and show you that now. Oh, oh, that was the uh, vehicle just reminding me that I had the ignition switched on. But of course, if I didn't have the ignition switched on, I wouldn't be able to show you all the features in the cabin. Okay, so first things first, the driver's seat is very nice and comfortable. In fact, the foam that they've used to build the seat is actually very sturdy. It's got a bit of give, but it keeps you at that nice high driving position, which I really like in VW vehicles. And the fabrics themselves are also very nice and hard wearing. They could have cheaped out a little bit and made them really tough, but they've actually chosen a very nice kind of dark gray on the outside and a nice kind of hatched light gray in the middle. I think it looks really nice. And that actually brings me on to the general state of the cabin. It's very nice. It's tough plastics and, and actually they're of a better quality than I've seen in some of the more modern PSA group vans, for example. The tough black plastics feel very nice and rigid and they're kind of offset by this sort of, well let's call this a kind of beige light muffin kind of plastics all the way around the bottom here. It, it works. There's not a lot of bells and whistles inside here but what you do have does what you need it to and it looks nice and it feels comfortable. So let's start on some of the controls and some of the basic bells and whistles that you get in the start line trim level. To the right over here you've got your controls for the wing mirrors. You can electrically adjust them from this control right here and if you switch it all the way to the top that'll start them heating up so that if you are in frosty conditions the wing mirrors will defrost. Just below that, you've got your headlight control switch. Now, anyone who's been in a VW or a Seat or an Audi from the last four years will be very familiar with that switch. It's very easy to control and it just switches round to whatever light setting you need. In fact, that's where your full beams and your side lights are controlled from right there as well. Now, the steering wheel. Now, apart from the big VW badge in the middle, there's nothing else on this steering wheel. Modern vans of this day and age tend to be completely covered in controls, but the VW steering wheel is just a kind of dark gray plastic. It's very nice to hold. It feels very good and grippy. And I especially like that little detail down here, just this hole. It's just a very nice looking steering wheel. It's very nice to hold and very nice to look at. Although while you're driving, please pay attention to the road, not the steering wheel that you're holding onto. Okay, so the information displays just in front of you on the dashboard are very clear and very, very visible. You've got your rev counter on the left, you've got your speedo on the right, and in the middle, you've got, again, a very familiar looking driver information display, which you can control the information that's being shown to you from the stalk on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. There are just two little buttons, one of them for up, one of them for down, and that's what you scroll through. You can get your miles per gallon, your fuel consumption, your speed, your range, etc., etc. Again, I'm just gonna say about the dashboard, it's got this nice little cover up here. Tough plastic, really nice and durable. So even though it looks nice, it's also very functional. Sweeping across, you've got this storage area here just above the information screen. It's got kind of two ribs either side, which kind of are little compartments to the left and the right. There is a blank space here, which looks kind of like maybe there was a 12 volt socket or something there, maybe at the higher trim levels. I do believe there is indeed an option to put a second 12 volt socket right there. And in the middle, you've got this kind of slant storage area which I think would be perfect for a sandwich or something like that just shove it in there forget about it it's not going to go anywhere it's got a nice lip at the back there which should stop anything from rolling out okay moving down the infotainment screen now it doesn't look as big or maybe even as functional as some of the more modern infotainment screens that you've seen in other vans you know including those ones from the PSA group but it does everything you'd expect. It's got a radio setting. It's got your media in, and I'll just show you that down on the source button down here, this is what you've got. You've got a CD player. You can plug an SD card in. You've got a USB socket, which is right here, and you can connect your phone up there. You've also got an aux in right here, and BT Audio. I haven't seen that in a while. So you don't have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but you can still hook your phone up, no problem. And you've got all your phone controls right here. You've got your eject button for the CD player. 
Blimey, you don't hear that word that often these days. You've got your setup screen where you can control language, sound and screen settings. And then you've got your sound balance as well where you you know, you can bump up the mids, you can drop the bass, whatever you want to do. You've got some nice little dials down here. You've got your power and volume control on the left hand side and on the right, that is your tuner control. Moving down from the infotainment screen, right below it, you've got your climate control. This is where you can control air conditioning. On this side, you've got your temperature control, you've got your fan speed, and you've also got the air direction selector there. So you can have it to defrost the windscreen, you can have it blowing straight in your face, you can have it demisting the windscreen and blowing down on your feet as well if it's a particularly cold day. All the settings that you know and expect are right there. I'm not going to wax lyrical about the air conditioning systems. Everyone knows how to use them. Okay, to the left-hand side, you've got your USB socket. I pointed that out earlier, but it's just nice to remind you that that's where that is. The AUX socket is just below. The USB socket is down and to the left. You've got some blank buttons here, three of them. Uh, you've got your auto start stop button here. This isn't a button. It's actually an indicator to show whether the passenger airbag is on or off. And you've also got your hazard light switch there nicely flashing on and off just to let you know that they are indeed flashing on and off as well. To the right of all of those climate controls, you've got five blank buttons, but you've also got your traction control setting right here. You can turn it off if you want to, or you can turn it back on. I don't know why you'd want to turn it off. And well, if you were in wintry, snowy conditions, you might want to turn it off just to give yourself a little bit more control, but that's where it is. Move down, you've got this little console here where the gear stick is mounted. Now, one of my pet peeves about the PSA Group vans is that the console that the gear stick is usually mounted on juts out quite a long way. Now, if you have a bench seat in a PSA Group van, that means that the leg room of the person sitting in the middle is often a little bit compromised and they might find themselves sitting as if they were riding a horse side saddle. Not so in the VW Transporter, there is plenty of room. This console is not intrusive at all. The gear the stick itself, while it has quite a small head, is very nice and easy to hold on to. It's got a little collar underneath the bottom here, which is what you use for pulling it into reverse. When you knock it into reverse, it flashes up on the screen a nice diagram of proximity. So it can show you where things are and it'll start beeping at you if you're getting too close to something or hitting something. When we reviewed the Vauxhall Vivaro, it didn't have reversing sensors and I really missed it. So it's nice to know that at this trim level on the VW Transporter, you get those reverse parking sensors it's because you really do miss them when you don't have them. I'll just knock it back out into neutral. As I said, very nice and easy to use. Okay, let's have a look at some of the other storage in the cabin. You've got a cup holder here on the driver's side and a cup holder over there on the passenger side. Now these aren't square like some other vehicles that you will remember that we've seen cup holders in that had kind of square sort of styling to. You know the ones I'm talking about. These are nice and round and nice and deep. These are VW cup holders and they're very cool. They can hold a coffee cup or a bottle of water, absolutely no problem. The door storage is also very generous. Um, you've got a nice kind of little pocket just about here and right down the bottom, you've got another bottle holder and you get that on the passenger side as well. So all in all, you've got two cup holders and two bottle holders and both doors have all that generous storage as well. But let's have a look at this stuff just above the glove box. Now this one up here is big enough and deep enough to fit your entire manual, goes in no problem. You've got a nice kind of, well, what is this? This is kind of, it's not a rubber mat, it's a bit of a textured kind of bottom to that storage area there and it's got a little lip at the end. So if you've got something flat or a little bit boxy, you can pop that in there, that'll be no problem. You've got a little bit of storage over here, that's very small, but I imagine you could probably fit a mobile phone in there. This one down here, however, a little bit shallow and angled up just the right way so that if you pulled off a little bit fast, whatever in there I think would tumble onto the floor. The one below it, however, just a little bit more useful. You could fit something in there and the, it's angled down quite nice and steeply and it's got a storage lip there as well. The glove box. It's actually quite a good size, and that is because there is no fuse box intruding into its space. The fuse box is actually mounted down here. So it's not getting in the way and it's not compromising your storage in any way at all. So that's very good. You fit all sorts of stuff in there. So there you go. Everything that you can expect from the VW Transporters cabin. Now, you know what? It's not as packed with bells and whistles as many of the other vans available, but what it has is what you need. It does what you need it to brilliantly. It's tough, it's durable, it's actually quite nice to sit in, it's got a nice colour contrast and you know what, I think that's one of the main reasons why it sets itself apart from the competition. And speaking of the competition, let's take a look at some of the other medium vans available in the sector right now. 
First up, it's the Citroen Dispatch, the Peugeot Expert, Toyota Pro Ace and Vauxhall Vivaro. Now this group are close relatives and a bit of a mixed bag with plenty of choice of tech and looks even without the option of different heights. However, the PSA Group and Toyota have done a good job giving each one a different vibe despite sharing the same platform. The Renault Traffic, Nissan NV300 and Fiat Talento. Now this bunch of relatives have an edge with different heights available, but their payloads need a bit of work. Overall, there's a lot to be said about this bunch of hardworking vehicles, but the one you pick will depend on the features you prefer. The Mercedes-Benz Vito. Now this is the luxury option with tons of options and variants to choose from. You do pay for the three spokes, but then don't you always? And finally, the Ford Transit Custom. Now you cannot talk about medium vans without mentioning the UK's bestseller. It's the top performer because of price, function and running costs. And it looks great too. The King has a lot of life left in it with hybrid and all electric versions on the way too. So there you go, a lot of choice and some truly strong competition. In the end, make your choice based on the job you need it to do and you won't go wrong. So there you go, all the competition in the medium van sector right now. But honestly, who gives a fig about the competition? I'm sat in the front of a VW Transporter, my favourite medium van. I've got the keys in the ignition, so let's get this out onto the road and give it a proper road test. Okay, so now we're at the test driving section of the review. If you could pull out your Tomina Transporter bingo card, there's gonna be a few phrases that I'm gonna use. One of them is gonna be, this is my favorite medium van on the medium van market right now. The other one is going to be, wow, the interior is really nice. It's something like you'd find in a 10 year old Seat or VW or Audi. Uh, and uh, you know, all oh, the plastics are lovely. All these kind of phrases I'm gonna be throwing up. Seriously though, this is where it starts to show why it's so loved. I think a lot of people, when they're looking for a new medium van, will be tossing up between the VW Transporter and several of the other ones. Now I don't know what it is, but I think that the mystique this vehicle holds just continues to run strong. Because this is the van that gets turned into the uh, camper vans, and in fact the caravels and things like that, you see this vehicle a lot more often as a pleasure vehicle, but it's just as good on the site as it is on the roads. Now under the bonnet is a two litre turbo diesel injection engine and it's a four cylinder. Now it's surprising because there's an awful lot of power. I mean nowadays the amount of cylinders doesn't really have a massive impact, it's about power output. So here we go on the hill tests. Now I've just knocked it down into second gear just to give myself a little bit of power, up into third and I can really feel the engine beginning to work. Because this is a manual gearbox, I feel completely in control of all that power. I can feel it being distributed to the front wheels, and it just feels good. It's very responsive. I'm in fourth gear right now. I'm putting my foot down just slightly. There's a nice little surge of power. I think the gearbox is working really well with the engine right here. It's kind of what you'd expect from VW anyway. Their build quality is often applauded and in fact lauded throughout the industry for being of such a high quality. They're up there with Toyota in terms of the respect that I think a lot of people and a lot of operators have for these vehicles. You expect good build quality from VW and the Transporter, especially this T6 platform, is very tough, durable and robust. And typical of the British weather, we've got a few spots of rain. There's a nice little rain shower coming, but of course this early in the year, that's kind of what you expect. The very steep slanted windscreen actually helps you quite a lot. You don't necessarily need the big wipers because it's such a steep angle. The water's actually just kind of sliding down it. It's sliding down into the recess just above the bonnet and dissipating in front of me. Very cool. The wipers, however, they are very big and they do a very good job to get rid of all the heavier blobs. So I've talked about how the gearbox seems to be working well with the engine, but how does it feel to change gear? Well, again, it's that build quality from VW that you completely expect. The gear stick itself is very nice. It's quite small, it's got a very small head, but it's easy enough to grip hold of. There's a little collar underneath it, which is what you use to slip it into reverse gear. The gear changes are very nice, very easy. There's no forcefulness. Again, it's that build quality that I'm constantly banging on about. And again, if you do have your bingo cards out, there's gonna be a few of you with bingo by now. 
So with the VW Transporter, 0 to 62 miles an hour in 15 seconds, and from a four-cylinder turbo diesel injection engine in the front of a long wheelbase van like this particular model is, that's fine. That's, that's pretty much what you'd expect. That's, uh, yeah, that's good. That's, that's, that's good. And it's got a top speed of 98 miles an hour, and anyone sitting there going, oh, why is it not 110 or 120? Well, the speed limits on our roads of course, are 70 miles an hour on the motorway, 60 miles an hour on de-restricted roads, and of course, for a commercial vehicle like this, 60 miles an hour is usually where you want to be hovering. Anything above that is illegal. So while it's nice to know that you can get up to nearly 100 miles an hour, you shouldn't, okay? Okay. Driving comfort is also very high. I feel very nice and comfortable right here, and I'm pretty sure if there were two more passengers sat on that bench seat that they would feel pretty happy and comfortable too. What's quite nice about this particular bench seat is that there's no intrusion really from the center console on the leg of the person in the middle, which means actually if you wanted to carry a child in a child seat, you could stick them on the outside and you'd still have nice enough room for an adult to sit next to you. So if you're out there with your partner on the road, I'm pretty sure you're all going to be nice and comfortable. In some commercial vehicles, the mounting for the seatbelt is quite high, so it sort of wanders around and sometimes you get a little bit of bite in your neck. But this is, this is just perfect, it's really nice, very, very comfortable. It's also quite nice and quiet in the front here. Now road noise, there's just a sort of a low rumble, I don't know if you can pick up on it through the cameras, but it's just a very low rumble, nothing too obtrusive. I'm not distracted. And actually what's quite nice as well is there's a few things in the back at the moment and I can, I can I'm conscious of the fact that they're probably sliding around but I can't hear it. That's really nice. You feel quite safe and cocooned in the front of a VW Transporter. It's not to say that if you sat in the front of any other van you wouldn't feel nice and safe and, safe and cocooned but uh, it's particularly nice in here. The seat is very comfortable as well. The driver's seat is again quite basic looking but very comfortable. So I've been told by the chase car in front that there's a nice little section of road coming up where it's nice and de-restricted. So we will open up the engine when we get to that point. Here we go. And yeah, it's hard to believe that this is just a four cylinder engine. Bags of power, up to fourth. Very, very nice. Doesn't feel like it's easing off as well, but the, I mean, it's hugging the road, which is great from a commercial vehicle. Nice to know that you can get that kind of speed on the motorways or the dual carriageways. And we've hit 60 miles an hour. Whack it up to fifth, see if there's any drop in it. Nah, nah, that's good. The driving height in the VW Transporter is also something that I really like. Now, I didn't really get much of a sense of it until we just went over a very low railway bridge. Now, it's weird, isn't it? When you get that perspective of something quite low above you, that's when you suddenly realize quite how close you are to it, and that's when I realized quite how high I was sitting. So I kind of am adjusting myself here, and it's just commanding. In fact, the steeply slanted windscreen just helps visibility even more, because it just feels like you've got your face, well, not quite pressed up against the glass, but you're close enough to it that you don't notice it. There's a couple of bits of dirt on the windscreen that just are not obstructing my view in the slightest, because I'm just not seeing them. I mean, this is a genuine question, actually, to everyone watching. Is it just me that absolutely loves this van for reasons that you can't quite put your finger on? I mean, I don't know what it is about these vehicles. I mean, there's, there's just so much stuff that I like about it. I like that they get converted into the modern-day camper vans. There's a lot of heritage that VW has with this vehicle, that the Transporter is a panel van as well as being a caravel, a camper van. Just, I mean, am I the only one that sees that? Or is there, I mean, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear if there's any other people out there. I mean, I, you know, even if you're a massive petrol head and for you it's all about the engine or it's all about the tech or the mechanics, please let me know. Because I love this vehicle because of how it looks, how it drives and what it becomes. I'd be absolutely curious to find out what it is that you guys like about it. And by guys, I mean everyone because I am very inclusive. So how do we finish this one? Well, the VW Transporter is clean, comfortable, 
and practical. Three things that carry a lot of weight in the medium van sector. Think about it, you've got the Ford Transit Custom hoovering up sales left, right and centre. You've now got the PSA Group accounting for nearly a third of the medium van marketplace. And then you've got the VW Transporter, a van that's just as comfortable on the site as it is with a rock and roll bed in the back of the beaches. This is my favourite medium panel van. And hopefully now you understand why. So check it out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you're interested in seeing some more videos just like this one about other vans, click the links.